We're going to be talking about slope again, but this time we're going to be using the slope formula, and then we're going to talk about how to use that formula to be able to graph a line. But let's remind ourselves what we did. This is the very same graph that we saw in the last video, and we started at the y-intercept here, and we went down to the x-intercept, and we said that we went down 4, which was our rise, and we went to the right 2, which is a positive 2 in the run direction, so rise is negative 4 over run, which is 2, and we said our slope was negative 2. Now we're going to be able to, we're going to prove to ourselves that this formula really works. So there's a couple of fundamentals we need to know. First of all, we're going to, we need two points. This point we're going to call up here x1 and y1, and we know that that's the y-intercept and it was 0, 4. And then down here, we're going to call this point x2, y2, and we know that that point is 2, 0, because it was the x-intercept. The slope formula says y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So I need to go find my y2. That's this one right here, and it happens to be 0. And then I need to go find my y1 and subtract that. y1 happens to be 4, so I'm going to say 0 minus 4. And then I have x2. I have to start with the same point. Okay, so this is the point I'm always going to start with. When I start with the y, I have to start with that x. So 2 minus y1, which over here is 0. And we have then negative 4 over 2, or again, negative 2 slope. Now we want to find two other points just to prove to ourselves that this really does work. So we're going to pick a point that looks nice on this graph, on the graph, on our line. This point right here looks really nice, and that one, we're going to come out here, we're going to call that one, it looks like we went over 1 in the x direction and up 2 in the y direction. And then this point down here looks like a really nice point. And it looks like we went over 3 in the x direction and down 2 in the y direction. So those are our two points that we're going to use. And let's call this one um, x1, y1. It doesn't really matter which one you choose. You just have to decide that one's going to be x1, y1, one's going to be x2, y2. And let's use our slope formula again. So I'm going to y2 happens to be negative 2, minus my y1, remember the formula. So y1 happens to be 2 over, remember we have to start with this point, so x2 is going to be 3, minus x1, which is 1. And when I subtract, I get negative 4 on the top over 2 on the bottom, which again is negative 2. So three times now, I've used rise over run, I've used the x and y intercepts, I've used just two random points on my line, and all, every time I found the slope to be negative 2. So talking about equations of lines, we're at this point right here, just so you can follow along where I am. It says the equation of this line is actually y equal negative 2x plus 4. And it says, what did this, you find the slope to be above? And we found three times that to be negative 2. Is that value anywhere in the equation? Think about it for a second. Here's your equation. Where do you see the value of negative 2? Well, you see the value of negative 2 as the coefficient on x. Okay. What did you find the y-intercept to be for this point? Remember, we found that to be 0, 4. And do we see that value of 4 anywhere in that equation? And here it is right here as the constant. So we can say that the, the coefficient on x is equal to our slope, and the constant would be equal to our y-intercept. So given the equation y equal 1 third x plus 2, what's the slope of the line? Well, the slope, again, is the coefficient on x, so it would be 1 third. And does it have a positive or negative slope? It's a positive slope because it's a positive 1 third that we're looking at. And what is the y-intercept? Well, remember that that is going to be our constant, and our constant is 2. 
So it would be the point 0, 2. Okay, so now we want to use that line that we just found the slope and the y-intercept for and use it to be able to graph the line. So we'll remember here that we said that slope was equal to 1 third and this is rise over run and the y-intercept was is the point 0, 2. So let's plot 0, 2. So start with the y-intercept. All right. So 0, 2 would be this point right here. And then we're going to use the rise to be the second thing we're going to do. So from that point we rise 1. So we go up 1. Because it was positive we're going to go up. And then the third thing we're going to do is do the run. So from there, it's kind of like going to a stop sign and then turning. So we're going to turn at this stop line and go 3 to the right because it's a positive 3 and we would then have our new point. Alright, let's try that again. S step one in this case would be start with this point. Step two would be go up one. Step three would be to go over three. One, two, three, and if you see we're off our graph so that's not the best. So what happens if we get off our graph but we really haven't even found a second point that fits our graph? Well, there's another thing we can use. Thinking about the fact that it's 1 over 3 is our slope, but we can say that that's the same thing as negative 1 over negative 3, because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So I can change the signs. And this time I'm going to go down 1 and to the left 3. So I go, so let's start here first and see if we can get back to where we were. So we go down 1, and then one, two, three. Oh, there we are at our point. Try it again. Go down one and then to the left three and there we are back at our y-intercept. And then to find another point we can go down one and over three and now we have three points that lie nicely on my graph and actually a fourth one if I could draw a straight line we'd have our line. So again Find a point, if the y-intercept is in the equation, so that's a good place to start. Then go your rise and over, and then your run. One last thing about this um, changing signs. If this had been a negative one-third, then if we wanted to change that one to go the other direction, we would say it was a positive over a negative three. It's still equivalent. The negative can be in either part of the fraction. So if we have both positives, we can change into both negatives. But if you have a negative, you make it a positive and if you have a positive you make it a negative and then you can go the other direction.